An extremely important question for disciple makers is, which strategy can we follow that will create capacity for disciple making? When he sent out his disciples in Luke 10, he emphasized that it's all about relationships. Do not move from house to house, and that the best way to build relationships is to eat and drink with unbelievers. Luke 10 verse 7 Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you. Do not move around from house to house. It's not about designing new strategies for disciple-making. Jesus gave us the strategy long ago. We just need to rediscover it. Making disciples is not a program, something you sometimes do and sometimes you don't do it. It's a lifestyle of loving people and eating with them. It still is one of the most biblical ways of loving them. In true disciple-making style, we are building relationships, listening to people's stories, sharing ourselves with them by eating with them. People are their stories, storytelling and listening to stories. Humans are wired for stories, not for sermons and lectures. To listen to people's story is a sign that we value them as people, that they themselves are important to us, not only their possible decisions to repent or join our church. Sharing our own story with them is a sign that we share ourselves with them and don't keep a distance from them. We identify with them and come down to their level. By sitting around a table, sharing ourselves with them, we avoid the danger of regarding them as objects that something needs to be done to. Right through the Bible, the table is introduced as a strategy to facilitate fellowship between God and people and between people amongst one another. God's first commandment is, eat from every tree in the garden. The last word out of God's mouth in the Bible, His final invitation, come and drink, drink freely of the water of life. Everything in between these two invitations is a story of God serving us a life-giving meal, where if we eat and drink at this table, we shall never be hungry or thirsty again. Psalm 23 You prepare a table before me. Jesus told parables about the table, the wedding feast, the great banquet. When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the cripple, the lame, the blind. The setting for his parables were very often tables. Fifteen from twenty-three parables in Luke has food as a theme. His ministry evolved around a table, feeding the multitudes, multiplying the bread and fish was laying a table for them. It was around a table that they experienced God's power. At Amos, the two disciples experienced the presence of Jesus when they were eating together. Food is a reference point for Jesus even when he is not eating. I have food to eat that you know nothing about. The post-resurrection meals Jesus shared with his disciples are all about tables. Jesus calls himself the bread of life. He uses table talk to invite people for communion with him. Jesus said to them, Come every day to me and you will never be hungry. Believe in me, and you will never be thirsty. When he wanted to leave the sacrament that we can use to celebrate fellowship with him and one another, 
he used the Last Supper to introduce communion, a table, the way he wants us to remember him. It's common knowledge that the first church grew exponentially. One of their strategies was, they committed themselves to the common meal. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. All the Jewish feasts in the Old Testament had one common ritual, eating together. In his book, From Tablet to Table, Leonard Sweet says, You can explain the whole Old Testament and New Testament in three sentences each. The Old Testament. They tried to kill us. We survived. Let's eat. The New Testament. I love you, I forgive you, let's eat. According to the church of his time, Jesus had very bad table manners. His theology of the table was to eat with so-called bad people. In fact, he was crucified for his bad eating habits. He was a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. He ate on fast days. He ate with dirty hands. He ate with tax collectors. He sipped water at a well out of the bucket of a woman of highly questionable reputation. His party attitude annoyed the church. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus ate good food with bad people. The Jews avoided sharing a table with those outside the kingdom, the Gentiles. To them, the table was unholy if unholy people were present. They tried to keep their distance from unholy people, like sinners, unclean people, tax collectors, the outcast, those that lived a sinful life. To Jesus, the table was holy, when unholy people sat around it, Jesus used the strategy of the table to bridge the gap between holy and unholy people. Jesus set an open table, open to anybody that his father sends as a guest. The church of his time had a closed table. Only those that looked, dressed, and ate like the insiders were welcome. The primary definition of the church is a table where anybody is welcome. How different they might be from yourself. This is very clear in Acts the Holy Spirit constantly teaching the church. Invite more. Invite others. Invite those that are different. Change your guest list and your table manners. It's clear. In Jesus' disciple-making strategy, Jesus did not try to convince people with knowledge. He rather invited them to a table setting the example that the way to get to people's hearts is not primarily through arguments and convincing programs, but through relationships, love, and hospitality. It was around the table that the sinners experienced Jesus as somebody who did not primarily want to change them, especially not from a top-bottom position, but from a grassroots level. He did not offer them a set of rules or rituals. He offered himself. He did not sit at the table as a judge, condemning them. He was present as a real friend. The table offers the opportunity for living every value that normal friendship offers.
We have to rethink our strategies of just giving food to the outcast. Is it possible that we can rather use the same food, but set them a table and invite them to a communal meal, loving them, sharing ourselves and not only our resources? The disciple maker left us a most powerful strategy. The table. It's all about hospitality. In this age of individualism and anonymity, fellowship around the table is one of the best ways to love people. By sharing what you have, by sharing yourself, it gives people the opportunity to experience God's love for them. In order to change the world, we have to bring back the table. This is a cost-effective strategy, doable by any individual Christian or family. Thank you.